Last week you found us on the hard, with Sarian hauled out for a bottom job, to inspect our prop, change out the anodes, and generally give her hull and topsides some loving. Beautiful! We then took off for a sail to explore beautiful Magnetic Island. Okay, so we're doing something pretty cool today. We're going to walk out uh, to the forts that were built in uh, World War II and uh, go and check them out. Groovy! We were pretty interested to see what had been built back in 1942. Somewhere in these hills there are two gun placements, ammunition storage, a signalling station and a fort. Come on Maggie, come on. Come on Maggie, come on. The Woolguru Kaaba people were the original occupants of this land and we'd like to thank them for their part in helping us learn about this special place. It's beautiful walking through the mixed eucalypt woodlands with acacias, blackwoods, hoop pines and native kapok thriving in their natural environment. And wow, walking right underneath us is this beautiful guana. They're a carnivorous reptile that can grow up to about two and a half meters long. With long claws and sharp teeth, they can tear up their prey at a rate of knots. So it pays to let them be when you come across one. We were pretty excited to see this mama koala with a little bubba on her back. It's heartwarming to learn that this endangered species is thriving on Magnetic Island. So this is really interesting. This is actually, there's a few areas dotted along the track. One's the officer's mess and the officer's old sleeping quarters. And this is the camp mess actually, where all of the, the army guys used to come and get their tucker. So yeah, this is the barbecue and this is the eating area where they used to come and eat their meals, lunch, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'm currently being wowed out by the smells of nature. It's so good. You're walking along and there's the smell of the dirt tracks and the smell of the trees. I think it's the smell of green and the smell of brown. And, and then I could smell for ages this beautiful kind of honeysuckle smell, um, like a manukari smell, like a, yeah, it was just honeydew or something. Just the most beautiful, inviting smell. And it's this. Beautiful, just has the most gorgeous scent to it. It almost smells like a frangipani, but it's not. It's its own flower, and I can't remember what they're called. But gosh, it's just so good to be out in nature. So I love the, the smell and the scent of the ocean and the sea, but it's so lovely when you get back on land and you get to trek around and nature gives you these gifts. So beautiful. And everywhere else I look, just blowing my mind. These beautiful views. So this is a little stone building and located in here is where they kept all their guns and armament. Let's go and have a look.
Yeah, so this was the rangefinder station, and um, this guy was up here, and uh, he could he he actually got a really clear view of what was coming in here, and um, he'd give the gunner uh, a range and a, a bearing to shoot to, and. Uh, He's got a really clear view of the whole whole area here and and only sort of twenty or thirty meters just down down below us that's you can see where the uh, the gun was mounted. You sort of can't really describe it. It's so dramatic. The landscape is just amazing. The rock formations are just absolutely mind blowing. Really, it's just uh, just crazy stuff. So I'm sitting here trying to imagine what it must have been like back in the day when this was all being built to be one of the people that was carting all of the, st the stones and the rocks and the concrete and, and the guns hauling the ammunitions up here and even building the forts and the buildings and the women's communications tower. It's just an incredible feat when you think about it because we've, we've been climbing up and down these sort of mountainous tracks like goats and it's, it's uh, yeah, to have had the foresight to have built this place and then you know, I was thinking about what it must have been like to to um, to be thinking that your country might be invaded, and uh, and that you might be firing the actual cannons on people, and and um, actually be a, taking a part of of the actual protection of your country. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of must have been exhilarating and exciting in a way um, and also take a heck of a lot of effort so yeah but it's such such a magical place I probably would have been you know mixed between being away with the fairies and enjoying the environment and then being on alert and to see if there were any Japanese gunners coming nearby but yeah what a magical place this is it's just crazy <laughs> So this is where they had one of the gun emplacements. The gun was 155 mil, it weighed 10 tons. I'm not sure what sort of range that would uh, had back in those days, but pretty impressive uh, feat to get that gun all the way up here. It's uh, it's a pretty wild little track. Uh, well done, lads. 1943, I think they said they put it up here. Wow. Well, yeah. The guns could rotate 360 degrees by pivoting around a steel ring and with a firing range of 18.3 kilometres. Luckily only one shot was fired in anger though, to an unannounced American ship. Secret stash. Got a couple of beers in there. <laughs> <laughs> this boxy building was well disguised, being covered in mesh, branches, and leaves during the war. Here's where the Women's Army controlled all operations, including searchlights and radar giving ranges to targets and communicating with the battery on the mainland at Castle Hill.
here I am in the, uh, the control tower, the radio control tower and uh, this is the slot that the ladies used to look through and uh, they would line up and give coordinates where the guns were going to fire. So I'm just sort of imagining what it would be like to have the communication equipment in here and radioing down to the ships out in the bay and radioing down to the guys in the, um, at the gun emplacements below giving them ranges and uh, distances of where they should go and also spotting, helping spot foreign ships and uh, alerting the Navy down below which ships needed to be moved, so to speak. Interesting, very interesting history. So what an incredible place this is. This is the top fort, top of the fort, where they've got three 60 degree views of uh, their oncoming enemies or incoming enemies. And over there is the uh, telecommunications center. So the women's army were over there and they were telling the guys where to point their guns and where to fire to. And there's another gun placement just down here. It's a pretty super place. So we're just hanging out here having some lunch at a place with the most incredible view. It's absolutely amazing up here. Just to think of what uh, what happened back when they built all this, like the guys that humped all this concrete up here is just it's uh, just mind blowing. You know. How many how many guys? Twenty five guys. Twenty five guys. How many days? Uh, 10 months, 25 guys, 10 months, but they, get, they, they brought it all up on truck but it sort of gets to a point where you can't get a truck up here anymore and they would have humped all this stuff up here by yeah. hand, timbers and concrete. They up would, these hills and moving rocks and well, just amazing. incredible what they've built up here. Amazing 360 degree views gave a fantastic standpoint back in the day. Now tourists can take in the beauty of the area looking out for Pied Karawong, the Osprey, Eagles and Humpback Whales. It's just so neat, you can't capture these boulders just sort of stuck at really strange angles to each other and plonked and wedged anywhere, you just can't capture how incredible it is. Yeah, nature's amazing and <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> this is about 60 or 70 feet like straight down Pierce, bro. <laughs> Eighteen koalas were brought to the island in 1932 and their numbers have increased to over 800 on this beautiful island sanctuary of theirs. It's pretty cool to watch them in their natural environment just chilling out and hanging out. Scratching his bottom, my honey.
Uh, this guy's like dead to the world. If he was any more asleep, he'd fall out of the tree, I think. Quite funny. So this area we're standing in is the officer's latrine and wash area. And uh, there's nothing left of it now, but what a beautiful place to um, yeah. do your business. Do your business. <laughs> A lovely bushland setting to bathe in. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> He's ready. He's ready. <laughs> Look, so thank you so much for watching the video. We really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, something a little bit different, but uh, the beauty of nature is just, it rocks. Really, really good for the soul. Absolutely. What a great spot. <laughs> yeah. So thanks again. We really appreciate everyone's support uh, in growing and building our channel. And we love hearing from you guys. Um, it really inspires us to keep the channel going. So if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the old subscribe button. And give us a thumbs up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, wishing you a great week and we shall catch you next time round. Ciao for now. See you next week. You're the best husband.